Admiral Karak sank into his command chair, limbs trembling in shock. Only moments ago, the first official diplomatic envoy from the notorious planet Earth had strode onto his pristine bridge and proceeded to throw the entire meeting into chaos. The human called himself Chuck Norris, a supposed ambassador, yet he looked nothing like the dignified diplomats Karax had encountered from other new species. This Chuck was a hulking figure dressed in ragged denim pants and a leather jacket. His stern face was shadowed by a thick beard speckled with gray, and clamped between his teeth was a half-chewed cigar that leaked noxious fumes. Before Carax could even finish his prepared welcome speech, the human had cut him off with a gruff voice that sounded like crunching gravel. Name's Chuck, Chuck Norris. Let's make this quick, bug eyes. Carax flinched at the insult, his antennae twitching in agitation. The twelve-member bridge crew whispered anxiously amongst themselves. They had known contacting the infamous humans would be unpredictable, but this first meeting was already beyond anything they had anticipated. Chomping aggressively on his cigar, Chuck Norris strode across the polished floors, seemingly taking delight in trailing ash everywhere. Carax noted the human was an impressive two meters tall and nearly half as wide. Every inch of his frame was bulging, rippling muscle. Mustering his courage, Carax tried diplomatically, Yes, well, I hope this will be the start of a prosperous partnership between humans and the Federation. Chuck snorted derisively. Here's how it's gonna be, bug boy. Earth won't be joining any Federation pansy clubs, but we'll let you aliens stick around, as long as you stay out of our way. Got it? Karak swayed on his six legs, feeling faint. This was not proper procedure at all. Sir, please, if we could just sit down and have a civilized discussion. Suddenly, Chuck spun and lashed out with a massive leg in a perfectly executed roundhouse kick. His foot smashed into the bulkhead with a deafening crunching of metal and composite materials. Carax watched in horror as the human's foot burst out the other side of the thick wall panel, exposing sparking wires and broken pipes. The bridge crew erupted into shrieks of panic. Carax's own two hearts hammered in astonishment at this casual display of strength. Chuck fixed him with an icy stare and rumbled in his gravelly voice. The time for talking is done. I'll give you my terms once I'm done working out. Now, where's your gym on this tub? Unable to form words, Carax gestured helplessly down the corridor. Chuck nodded in satisfaction, cracked his massive knuckles, and then lumbered from the bridge, leaving smoldering footprints burned into the floor panels. As the human's heavy footsteps faded, Carax turned shakily to his tactical officer, a green-furred feloid named Rala. Alert all crew to avoid the human at risk of grave harm. Seal off Deck 8 and reroute power from non-essential systems to reinforce that area. The gymnasium on Deck 8 was sure to be Norris's first target. Carax prayed it could withstand the onslaught and buy them enough time to make an escape. This human clearly did not come in a spirit of peace and cooperation. Slumping into his seat, Carax wondered bitterly if the Federation had made a terrible mistake reaching out to the humans. Perhaps it would be safest to leave Earth isolated from the intergalactic community until they evolve beyond their primitive barbarism and lust for violence. For now, survival was the priority. Alarms blared across the Intrepid as the entire ship shook from a series of colossal impacts. Admiral Carax clung to his command chair, looking desperately at the screens. All signs showed the destructive impacts originated from Deck 8, the location of the ship's state-of-the-art gymnasium. Damage report! Carax shouted over the din. The readings confirmed his worst fears. Somehow, the human Norris had already demolished the reinforced gym in his workout. Carax could hardly imagine what kind of training routine could unleash such devastation. Making a quick decision, 
Carax dispatched a full security squad led by his top officer, Clax, to confront and contain the human. However, moments later, a barrage of panicked communications flooded the bridge. The team had found Nora still in demolition mode, flipping massive exercise machines as if they were toys. When Clax had confronted him, the human had given a menacing grin and made a bizarre request. He wanted to spar. Having no better option, Carax granted permission for Clax to engage the human in regulated combat, a sparring match. He ordered half the crew to the largest cargo bay and had the area hastily converted into an improvised arena. Perhaps humoring this Norris would mollify him. A tense hush fell across the gathered crowd as Clax stepped into the arena. At 2.5 meters tall, the burly Feloid was the Intrepid's combat champion. His last opponent had required weeks in the infirmary, but against the human, Clax seemed almost diminutive. Chuck cracked his knuckles, dropped into an odd bow, and beckoned arrogantly for Clax to attack. With a roar, the Feloid charged, lashing out with hardened claws. In a blur, Chuck deflected the blows without even changing his expression. For several minutes, Clax desperately sought an opening, using every technique in his arsenal, but Norris evaded them all with almost bored ease. Finally, the human went on the offensive. His legs sliced out in a thundering roundhouse kick that sent Clax flying across the bay. Before the phaloid could rise, Chuck was upon him, raining down merciless body blows and punches to the head. Clax crumpled, beaten and broken. Carax watched in horror at the utter domination. The rest of the crew whispered fearfully. Chuck called out, This was just a taste of human power. None of you aliens could ever match it. He pointed to the Intrepid's chief engineer, a diminutive sapient named Tiki. I bet even that little pipsqueak there could outlift you. The crew bristled at the insult. Chuck crossed his massive arms. I'll prove human superiority. You aliens challenge me in any contest. Strength, speed, endurance. Be creative. When I crush you, you'll have to accept Earth's terms to join your Federation. Carax shared anxious looks with his officers. What choice did they have? Very well, Mr. Norris. We accept your challenge. Chuck grinned menacingly through his tangled beard. The test would begin soon, and Carax suspected Norris would prevail through brute force alone, but he hoped the coming contest would reveal the humans' weaknesses. Their lives depended on it. The first round of Norris's tests began and the human prevailed easily in feats of brute strength. He bench-pressed twice the weight of the strongest crew member, did one-armed pull-ups with ease, and smash through iron bars with his fists. The aliens were demoralized watching Chuck flex and pose after each victory. Before the next round, the Intrepid's assigned human ambassador, Jane Forrest, pulled Admiral Carax aside. She implored him not to play to Chuck's strengths. Don't try to beat him physically, she advised. Play games that require empathy, creativity, and intelligence. Make him uncomfortable. Carax nodded and conspired with his officers to devise clever challenges focused on cooperation, compassion, and problem-solving. When Norris arrived for the second round of tests, he was surprised to find the aliens all calmly sitting in a circle. Carax explained the first challenge would be resolving conflicts through peaceful discussion. Chuck stubbornly refused to participate at first, but Jane insisted somehow getting the arrogant human to join the circle. One by one, crew members shared personal stories and settled grievances through thoughtful dialogue. When Chuck's turn came, he grudgingly described his own past being bullied as a child. The aliens related to his struggles and showed him empathy. For the first time, his stern facade cracked. The next test was rescuing trapped crew members from a simulation. Chuck wasted precious minutes trying to smash through obstacles by himself. The aliens worked together, created solutions, and completed the task quickly. 
Chuck was infuriated by his poor performance. Real rescue missions require strength, he shouted. But Jane pointed out that efficiency and teamwork were more important. Chuck had no retort. The final test was constructing useful tools from scraps. Again, Chuck struggled badly, building clumsy, inefficient contraptions. The aliens designed elegant, imaginative solutions. Chuck threw down his busted tool in frustration. You got lucky with those rigged tests, he growled, though uncertainty tinged his voice. Crax replied gently, There are different ways to measure skill, Chuck. We have shown you some of them. Chuck stalked off in a huff, but later, back on the bridge, Carax found a crude note from the human. It simply read, Not bad, bug boy. Carax smiled. Perhaps there was hope after all. Carax waited nervously as the final test results were tallied. Thanks to the unconventional challenges devised by his crew, the aliens had managed to keep pace with Chuck Norris's raw physical dominance. Now, with all contests completed, the human stood scowling as Ambassador Jane presented the final scores. Norris had narrowly won tests of strength, speed, and endurance. But the aliens prevailed in challenges of cooperation, intelligence, and creativity. Overall, the scores were dead even. Chuck slammed a fist into his palm. You must have cooked the books. There's no way those weaklings matched me. Karak stepped forward. The results are accurate. We succeeded by embracing our diversity and unique skills. Nora started to argue, but Jane silenced him with a hand on his massive forearm. Chuck, you showed incredible physical gifts today. But there is so much more to humans than that. She gestured around the cargo bay. Look what we accomplished by working together. Our species can do incredible things, but only unified. Chuck frowned, but Karak saw his defiance fading. The Admiral continued gently. Your people have many fine qualities. Tenacity, loyalty, passion. We see your potential just as you have seen ours. Chuck sighed deeply, then inclined his head in acquiescence. Maybe I misjudged you aliens. He turned to Carax and extended a meaty hand. You got guts, bug boy. I guess your federation ain't so bad after all. Carax joyfully shook the proffered hand. Together, we can achieve more than either species could alone. Jane proposed a student exchange program so humans and aliens could learn from each other. Chuck agreed instantly, suggesting they start with martial arts training. Carax and Jane shared amused looks but readily gave their approval. In his ready room, Carax sank into his chair, finally relaxing. Perhaps humans would always be a bit uncouth, but they had courage and spirit in abundance. With the right guidance, they would make fine partners for the Federation. Meanwhile, Chuck Norris returned to Earth and made a surprising announcement at a press conference. He was founding a brand new martial art called Alien Jitsu. The flashy new fighting style incorporated moves learned from species across the galaxy. Chuck demonstrated Alien Jitsu in an instructional video that went viral instantly. He finished with a split screen showing dozens of aliens mimicking his techniques in their own ship dojos. Wherever Chuck Norris went, his legend only grew. And now, he was bringing the galaxy a little bit closer together. One year after first contact with the Intrepid, Chuck Norris stood proudly on a makeshift stage in the Mojave Desert, gazing out at the immense crowd gathered from across the galaxy. Norris had spearheaded this event, the first intergalactic mixed martial arts tournament, as a symbol of unity between humans and aliens. The competition floor below featured state-of-the-art gravity neutralizers so species of all shapes and sizes could spar safely. Rows of vendors served Earth cuisine alongside exotic alien delicacies. The colorful horde of attendees was mingling enthusiastically. With a grin, Chuck activated the microphone to address his audience. One year ago, I came in arrogance, 
saw only our differences. His face grew solemn, but the fine beings of the intrepid showed me we have more in common than divides us. Their guidance made this event possible. Right on cue, Carax and his senior staff marched onto the stage, uniforms gleaming. The crowd cheered at the sight of the former rivals now turned comrades. Jane Forrest gave Chuck a proud pat on the back. Today we celebrate our partnership through the contest of skill and spirit, Chuck's voice boomed. May the best being win, and when it's over, we'll raise a glass as friends. The roar from the audience shook the desert valley. Chuck raised a fist. Let the games begin. The tournament saw epic matches between fighters from dozens of worlds. Chuck himself competed, though he was unseated early by a wily Lavuian who fought intelligently. Chuck applauded his conqueror's cunning style. In the end, the climactic final pitted Clax against a new human pupil of Chuck's, a scrappy marine named Torres. Their back-and-forth battle kept the spectators wrapped until finally, Torres emerged victorious by exploiting the Feloid's stamina weakness. At the closing ceremony, Chuck brought both exhausted fighters onto the stage. You both embody the best qualities of your people, he told them. Together, our species will accomplish amazing things. Later, watching fireworks paint the night sky, Chuck turned to Carax with a contented smile. We've come a long way, my friend. I believe this is just the beginning. The Admiral nodded, raising his drink in agreement. There was so much more to achieve, side by side. Back aboard the Intrepid, Ambassador Jane sat down across from Carax. Who would have thought it possible a year ago? You helped turn one of our most stubborn humans into an ambassador for interspecies fellowship. Carax waved his claws modestly. The credit lies with you for opening his mind and with Chuck for having the courage to evolve. Their unlikely partnership had given Carax hope. If humans and aliens could find common ground, any differences might be overcome through perseverance and compassion. This joint journey was only just beginning. 